Hello, hello, hello. Isn't it a beautiful day today? Isn't it a great day for all of us to learn something new? Well, today it is me, Miss Eva. And in today's lesson, we are back once again with another exciting, entertaining, and of course, a very informative episode. Before we begin our lesson today, I will need all of you at home to prepare a few things. You will need some of these materials. Don't worry, you probably have this at home. Firstly, get your notebook. Next, you may want to get a paper. And most importantly, stationaries. Well, boys and girls, do you still remember the Gramwis? Yeah, the cute one with the funny hair and the specs. Well, let's welcome the Gramwis back to the show. Let us all call out for him or her, shall we? Gramwis, Gramwis, hello, are you there? Hello, Gramwis, Gramwis, are you there? Hello? Oh, hey, hello, I'm back, Miss Eva. Hi. Wow, so now we actually have Miss Gramwis. Look at her hair, isn't it cool? Well, why don't all of you welcome our Gramwis for today? Hello. Would you like to say hello? Hi. Hello, guys. Well, welcome back. Now, are we all ready for another interesting lesson? Gramwis? Yes, yes, of course, we are. Let's go. Let's go. So now that the Gramwis is ready, I hope that you're the, the ones who are watching at home are ready at to it as well. So yay, let's start. Will I be seeing you soon, Gramwis? I will, right? So, see you soon, Gramwis. Oh, bye. Bye. So now that you're ready, let's get this wonderful day started. How shall we start? Hmm. So, boys and girls at home, what did I just do? Guess. Hmm. What about now? What was I doing? And what did I do earlier? Could you guess? I did three different actions. I jumped, I clapped my hands, and I was trying to sleep. All those verbs, all those actions, are what we commonly call actions or action verbs. So now that you're at home, ready and excited, can you please guess what will we be learning today? Will it be something that you know of? Or will it be something new? Well, you got that right. Today, we will be focusing on action verbs. The things that you do, the actions that you make, and the movements that everything and everyone does. So, boys and girls, Firstly, I would like you to look at all these boys and all these girls. What are they doing? Look at the picture shown to you. You could see that they walk, they were eating, they sleep, they read, and they also swim. These are all action verbs. But then again, what are action verbs? How do you define them? Well, action verbs describe something or someone. For instance, the actions of a person or a thing. Basically, action verbs describe nouns, people, animal, places, and of course, things. So, let's give this a try. Again, I want you to look at this picture closely. Can you guess what is this person doing? There are pretty obvious actions that are shown. And some of these actions may be known to you. Or maybe these are the actions that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. First, play. Second, eat. Third, watch drink, 
read, sing, sleep, and something that most of us enjoy to do in the evening, run. In other words, boys and girls, everything you do, any actions that you make, any actions that I make, any actions that your cat makes are action verbs. Basically, they are movements. In addition, an action verb is a type of verb that describes physical or mental action. Yes, describes physical or mental action. Every sentence has a subject, the person, the place, the thing, or idea a sentence is about. And action verbs will let you know what the subject of a sentence is doing. For instance, the subject is a girl. And when you look at the action of the girl, that girl may be running, or even walking, or sleeping. For instance, look at yourself right now. What are you doing at home? Are you sitting? Are you sleeping? Are you reading? Are you talking? Well, my guess is you are probably sitting on your couch or at a comfortable sofa and watching me on television right now. So, now that I've guessed about you, can you guess what are the actions that you are doing? Is it the same as my guess? Well, commonly, yes, the actions may be sit and watch. You are probably sitting on a couch or a sofa and watching television. Now, why don't you look at me? What am I doing? What do you think I'm doing? Take about five seconds to guess. Yes, I am standing, talking, and teaching. So, the action verbs are actually pretty clear. My actions are simple, and it involves three different actions. They are stand, talk, and teach. I'm standing, I'm talking, and I'm teaching you English. So, boys and girls, remember this very simple rule. If and only if the subject tells you about one place, one thing, one person, or even one animal, you will and you must have to add S on the action verbs. Are you clueless about what I'm saying? Well, let's look at some examples. Trust me, this is going to be easy, so all you have to do is sit back and relax. Look at the first one, look at the picture. The boy in this picture plays on the swing alone. There is only one subject. In this picture, the boy is seen to be alone. Alone, he is alone by himself. And since it is singular, we would add S on the verb play. And that explains the sentence. Now, let us look at another example. This next example may give you a clearer view on how to add S on your action verbs. Look at this cute, at this cute orange cat. The orange cat eats a whole fish by itself. In this picture, the orange cat is seen to be alone all by herself, all by itself. And since it is singular, we add S on the verb it. Similarly to the boy who was playing on the swing alone. Now, let's look at another example. But why don't we look at another example involving things? Things around you, your pencil, your ruler, the school bell, or probably even your handphone. Look at this picture here. Let's look at the school bell. If you look closely at the picture, you would see a tiny cute little bell. Yes, now we are going to talk about the bell. The bell is alone and lonely. It's alone by itself. Look at the sentence. The school bell rings at 12 p.m. every day. In this picture, there is only one bell. And since it is singular, we add S. Just like the other two examples before, 
on the verb ring, which shows the actions of the bell, just like the ones you have in your school, the ones that rings every 30 minutes. So, boys and girls, if you notice, we would often add S when the noun is singular. However, there is a golden rule that is very important. There are some words that you may add ES as well. You must be wondering at home, what are the kind of words that you would have to add ES and not S? Well, in general, if and only if the verbs end with SC, CH, double S, X, or a Z, you would add ES in the sentence. You would be more clear upon looking at these examples shown later. So now, let's look at the examples. The first one, something that involves time. Time passes by slowly. Let's look at the second example. Christy, a singular subject, teaches English in school. Remember, boys and girls, Christy here is a singular subject. Therefore, her action teach is added with ES. It's not that difficult, is it? Okay, now let's look at the third example. She watches television every day after school. Similar to, to example number two, she usually refers to a girl or a lady. In this sentence, it refers to a girl. And since the subject is singular, just like Christy, you would have to add ES on the verb. Right, so besides the example above, when the subject involves more than one, for instance, if you've got two friends with you, you've got two things with you, or you're going to two different places like two schools, and there are probably two cute fluffy animals or cats, the verb would always take its original form. You do not have to add anything to the verb. And I repeat, you do not have to add anything to the verbs. To make it more clear, let's look at these two examples. Look at the picture. You would see a few boys running at the field. Okay? An example would be, the boys play football together at the field every evening. When you look at a picture, you would realize that there are more than one boy in the situation. Therefore, the verb remains the same. You pretty much just use the root verb. You don't have to add an S, you don't have to add an ES, you don't have to add anything at all, which makes it a lot simpler when writing a sentence. Now, let's look at the second picture. Look at these cute little girls. The girls dance together every weekend at their ballet class. Okay, so here, the root, sorry, the verb dance is, retains its root verb because it involves more than one girl. Since there are more than one girl in this situation, the verb remains the same. Like I said earlier, you pretty much just use the root verb when the subject is more than one or in simpler form when the subject is plural. So even if you have a thousand of them, it would still retain its root verb. So, as you're at home right now, I'm actually really hoping that you can see the difference. And if you don't, worry not because we are going to try some questions in the next segment that would probably make it more clear for you. So now, we are back with practice time. This is a time for you to check if you have understood what was taught to you earlier. When do you add the S? When do you add the ES? Or can you actually identify the verbs in the picture shown to you? Are you ready, boys and girls? Let's go. So, first thing first, I would like you to look at this picture. Then, can you list at least five different action verbs seen in this picture? The action verbs are actually pretty common. The first one, runs. The second, cycles. Hits, eats, throws, waves, stands. And if you notice, all of this Action verbs are very, very common. So, boys and girls, do you get any of these action verbs from the picture? 
Were you able to identify these action verbs? Good job, boys and girls. And even if you were not able to do so, there's always chances for you to re-attempt them later. See, it wasn't so difficult, wasn't it? For today's challenge, we are going to call the Gram Whiz. Yeah, like I said earlier, the one with the funky hair and the cool specs and really awesome costume. So let's call our Gram Whiz out to help us arrange our challenge time. Gram Whiz. Hello. Hello. I'm here. I'm Gram here. Hi, Gram Whiz. Welcome back. So now, in this segment, you are going to help us play a game of charades. Really? Okay, yes, we're going to be playing a game of charades for today's lesson. And this time, we would have our grammaries with us. So, viewers at home, let's play a game of charades. Yay! Another day of games. Yes. What should we do? Can we start now? Are you ready to start? Well, we will only be able to start this game when our Grammar Whiz is ready. You seem really, really excited today, Grammar Whiz. So, as much as she is excited, I'm hoping that everyone at home is also excited. Well, for today's challenge, this awesome Grammar Whiz would have to act out three different actions together. And while you are at home watching this, you would have to guess what are the actions shown. So, boys and girls watching, are you ready? I'm guessing that it's a yes. Grammys, are you ready? Here I am! Oh, oh, wow, okay. what is that? Oh. Okay, so Grammys just gave me a box. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming the activities will be in this box. Mm. So here goes round one. In round one, what Grammys will be doing is, she will be picking out a piece of paper from this magic box and act out accordingly. Are you ready? Yes, of course. Ready? Ready? Let's go. Pick Let's one and no peeping. Hmm, okay. I'm not looking. Uh, okay. okay. So, can you guess what was Graham Wiz's action? What was she doing? Was she singing? Was she sleeping? Was she eating? Yes, you got that right. The Graham Wiz actually hopped. So, let's do this again. Would you like to do it again? Of course. Let's go. No looking. All right. Yes, another round and she looks pretty funny. Okay, can you do it again? Can you guess what is Grammys doing? Is she dancing? Is she yawning? Is she diving? Well, to me, it's quite easy to guess. What do you think this Grammys is doing? Yes, this Grammys here is singing. Sing. That was the action verb acted. Good job, Grammys. Thank you. This sounds pretty exciting. So now, Grammys, we are going to do it for the last time. Okay, this is going to be her last time doing it. So you would have to be ready to guess for the very last time. Let's go. Yay, let's go. What is she doing? Well, okay, so now Grammys does not seem as energetic as she was before. She looks pretty comfortable. So, what do you think Grammys is doing? Can you guess? Well, I think our Grammys here is actually sleeping. Yes, sleep. But that was the action verb. Good job, boys and girls. Wake up. Oh, she's awake. Yay. Okay, thank you so much for paying attention. So, Grammys, thank you so much for this magic box. All right. And before we actually end this segment, can you do us a favor and recall all the actions that you did earlier? Sure, I can. Let's go. Let's go. Hop. 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 Sing. Sing. Sleep. Sleep. That was a very good job, Grammy. So right. she hopped, she sang, and of course, she tried to sleep. Okay, good job, boys and girls, for paying attention. 
Thank you. Today, I am going to share with you some super interesting fun facts about English. Just as interesting like what Grammarist just did earlier. Well, you know that we have been learning about verbs today, right? And I'm pretty sure you would know the verb swim. The one where you just dip yourself in the pool or probably the sea. Well, the fun fact today is about the word swims. S-W-I-M-S. Did you know that the word swims will also be swims even when you turn them upside down? Well, try writing it down on your piece of paper right now. You would notice that it is spelled the exact same way. And another fun fact. Did you know that a new word is added to the dictionary every two hours? That means we have about 12 new words added every single day. So between now and your next meal, which is probably lunch or dinner or probably breakfast, a new word will be put into the dictionary. And during the course of the year, which is about 12 months, about 4,000 new words are added. And if you ask me, that's a whole lot of new words. So, the next time you try to catch the attention of the person that marks your paper, or probably try to get the attention to the, of the person that you're talking to, what you may want to do is add new words. So, boys and girls, we have learned so many new things. Grammarist has taught us so many new things as well. And as interesting as the lesson was today, we have actually learned more than what we already know before. Basically, we learn about action verbs, the movements, and how verbs are actually actions that something or someone does. Remember, action verbs are the things that a noun does. Person, a place, an animal, or a thing. So always remember that if the subject, any noun, is singular, you would have to add as on the verb. And when there is more than one, let's say 10, a million, a thousand, or probably even five, we would always use the root verb. So, boys and girls, it seems pretty easy, right? Something that you could remember on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, in the next segment, we are back again with a challenge. But what's different about these challenges, we are back for a mega challenge. And just like the previous challenge, we are going to call our grammarist. Yes, like I told you earlier, the person with the funny hair and specs and who tried to sleep earlier. Let's call our grammarist. Grammarist! Grammarist, I need you! Hi, grammarist! Hi! For this week's challenge, you may record yourself and your family friends doing different actions. For instance, Record your mom's cooking, your sister reading, or even your dad eating. You may even record yourself doing different actions. Exactly. So, that's pretty much uh, what the action is about. What more, Grammarist? Once you're done, you may post them on Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok with the following hashtags Grammys, hashtag GrammyWrite, hashtag GrammarMadeEasy. Thank you, Grammys. Right. So, Grammarist practically told you what your mega challenge is for today. I am actually, both of us are actually looking forward for all of you at home to take up the challenge. And remember, when using social media, always ask for your parents or your the guardian's help. Good luck. Well, after all these lessons that was interesting and you got to meet a really cute Grammarist today, I'm sad to say that we have come to the end of today's episode. Remember, Every action you make is considered an action verb. When you eat, when you talk, when you sleep, when you hug your mom. Well, I guess that's all for today, right, Grammarists? Yeah. So from us, we would just like to say, take care and see you in the next episode. Till then, stay, stay safe, safe, boys, boys and, girls. and girls. Bye. Bye.